So, good afternoon. First of all, I'm better than anybody here morally because I'm sacrificing my health just by wearing a tie. Because by doing so, I'm the only person here in the audience, I'm saving the planet. Because when you wear a tie, you can, yeah, there will be in two weeks, there will be this Paris con conference about climate change, and, and it's about two degrees Celsius. And I can tell you, by, if you wear a tie, you can reduce the room temperature by two degrees Celsius when you get a little strangled. So we should make a legislation that everybody, except specifically women, need to wear ties in winter. That would save the planet far more than any light bulbs or whatever. So I'm talking how we can use this whole environmental discussion, uh, all this blame and shame now for changing for positive. We always talk, oh, we are too many people on this planet. We think uh, we are causing environmental problems, but it's only because we think we want to be less bad. What I'm talking is about beauty, about quality, about innovation, how we can use the 40 years of environmental debate for innovation. But this is where we are. We want to be carbon neutral. Yeah. Uh, Tallinn wants to be climate neutral in 2040. You can only be carbon neutral when you don't exist. Isn't it amazing? So, you can only be climate neutral when you don't exist. Did you ever see a climate neutral tree? So, with all our brain, we want to be more stupid than a tree. We feel so terrible to be here that we think it's better we are not here. This is why we talk about reducing, avoiding, minimizing. You see ads like this one from Toyota, which says zero emission. You only can zero, have zero emission when you don't exist. So even if you would shoot yourself right now, you would have emissions. So you're already here. So let's talk about beauty, about quality, not about reducing, avoiding. Nature is celebrating abundance, not minimizing damage. But this is what we do right now. We do waste to energy. There are big plants here in this country to make built incinerators, and they call it waste to energy. But by doing so, we lose about 20 times of the energy which it takes to make the stuff. So they, are, they plan about three, four incinerators now. We talk about planetary boundaries, that our planet is limited, so we only have a certain opportunity for this planet, but this is not true. When we were gathering and hunting, our limit for this planet was about five million people. When we learned to do traditional agriculture, the limit of this planet was about uh, 500 million people. When we learned to do industrial agriculture, the limit was about five billion people. And we are beyond this limit because our agriculture is not very smart. But we, if we take a big E, we have 10,000 times more energy that we can make a far better and far bigger M out of it. This is why we easily could make five planets equivalent out of our existing planet. So we are not too many, we are just too stupid. And we feel terrible to be here. It said no goal is more crucial to healing the global environment than stabilizing human population. Yeah. In Israel, people say, when you save one life, you save the planet. Here it says, the more you kill, the better. So we generate this feeling, it's better we're not here. Can you imagine? I think a lot of you like to eat organic food, but can you imagine there's not one organic standard in the world which allows that my own nutrients can go back? Yeah. Every day I need to pick up two grams of phosphorus, phosphate, and need to release it to the environment. Otherwise I cannot have teeth, I cannot have bones, I cannot store on energy in my body. Yeah. And we think, it's organic when our own nutrients cannot go back. I was working in China. When you're invited for dinner in China, people expect you to stay till you use the toilet because it's unfriendly to leave and to take the nutrients with you. Because you're invited for dinner, not for stealing nutrients. So we need to learn to become native to this planet. We are a part of this here. So when we generate this feeling yeah, that we are too many, 
then we are happy for everybody who's not here. Yeah. So we can do something to be less bad, like wearing ties. Yeah. We can, if you take a build in a building, if you take the elevator in a building, yeah, it takes it takes five times less energy than if you take the stairs, because our perverse agriculture takes ten calories of energy for one calorie of food. Yeah. So if you take the stairs, you only need two calories. Yeah. With that, uh, if you take the stairs, you can minimize your carbon footprint by five times. And then you die a little earlier, you can minimize your carbon footprint even more. Yeah. Uh, so are we too many? No. If you look at the biomass of ants, yes, yeah, just tiny little insects, basically. These ants yeah, have, their biomass is four times more than of human beings. And because ants only live about uh, three to six months, and they equal in their calorie consumption about 30 billion people. So we are not too many, we are just too stupid. We are not good enough, our engineers are not good enough. So Europe is talking about an aging population. Yeah? You see these graphs and we see that people get older. And But really, do we get older? Society was never that young. So how can we declare humans as waste when they get 65 years old? Yeah. That doesn't work. Here you can see the working age population is changing dramatically. And you see this for the Baltic states, you see this for different places, and you can see um, that doesn't work. When we introduced Social Security in 1891, yeah, our lifespan was exactly half of what it was today, when you even calculate out uh, child, um, early uh, dying at an early age, was in child. So the retirement at that time yeah, was 70 years. Yeah. If you would have the same percentage of people retiring than we had in 1891, our retirement age would be 88.2 years. Yeah. So how can we do declare people as waste when they get 65 and put them whatever into Spain or whatever place. That doesn't make sense. Yeah. We lose uh, the opportunity to make a difference. So I have been working for quite long on what I call cradle to cradle. Instead of thinking from cradle to grave, it means cradle to cradle. So we look how to make things, to design them in a different way. It means everything is a nutrient. People talk about, oh, cradle to cradle is a word without waste. But when you talk about a world without waste, you still think about waste. If, if I tell you, don't think about a pink crocodile, you think about a pink crocodile. Yeah? So even with zero waste, you still think about waste. But nature only thinks about nutrients. And because we don't want to live just like insects, yeah, we want to have computers, we have to want, we want to have washing machines, we have different nutrients. The things which get consumed, like food, like shoe soles, like brake pads, like tires, need to be designed to go in biological systems. Things which are just used as a service, like a washing machine, are designed to go into technical systems. So there is no waste anymore, because everything is nutrient, using the right energy sources and celebrating diversity. But this is traditionally what we do with sustainability, and we'll, you will hear about this in other speeches. You know, if I ask you, how is your relationship with your girlfriend, what do you say, sustainable? Yeah. Then I'm really sorry for you. Yeah. And in, in business, sustainability makes your customer your enemy. It says, if you don't buy it, it's even better. So it says, I'm 100% evil, 90% evil, and my goal is zero. But this is not a very attractive goal. Yeah. So, and it has to do a little bit with our religious background. If God yeah, says you're evil anyways and only God can redeem you, then you can only be less bad. But less bad is no good. It's just bad less. So, we think it's environmental protection when we destroy a little less. We said, please reduce your water consumption, protect the environment. Please reduce your energy bill, protect the environment. But you're not protecting, you're only minimizing damage. Yeah. Do you protect your child when you beat your child only five times instead of ten times? Yeah. And think about you come home and you said, oh, today I'm child neutral. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Funny. 
So we have the sustainability def definition to fulfill needs of the present generation without compromising the needs of the future ones. How sad. Yeah. <laughs> this is, yeah, when you, you come home and you tell your children, oh, I'm not compromising the needs of your future. Yeah. You want to be good for the future, isn't it? So this is why it's not about efficiency. It's about effectiveness. So it doesn't help you yeah, when you want to go here into Riga, yeah, to go efficiently into Tallinn. So you first need to say, where do you want to go? Yeah. So where, what is the goal? Not optimizing wrong things. In the logic, yeah, Eastern Europe, Poland has been protecting the environment so much better than, for example, France, just by inefficiency. Yeah. So if you do the wrong things, don't make them perfect. Otherwise, they're perfectly wrong. Yeah. This is why, let's talk about effectiveness. This means, hey, I'm not that good here. I've just reached 30% of what I wanted to do. But the more you buy from me, the quicker I can change. Now the customer is your friend. He becomes a change agent. He helps you to change the company. Then you can talk about where do you want to go. Sure, you can minimize your carbon footprint. For example, if you cut your hair shorter, I forget it as well from time to time. Yeah. But when you cut your hair shorter, yeah, between these two people here, the difference is yeah, 7,000 liters of warm water. Just So if you cut your hair short, you can do something to minimize your carbon footprint. Yeah. Oh, there are endless things. You, if you enter a plane, for example, and you first go to the toilet you know, and you empty your digestion system, it saves five tons of kerosene just flying from here to New York, for example. Yeah. So you can be less bad, but does it help us? So we need to learn to be good because for being less bad, we are too many people on this planet. We need to look to say, look, there are consumption products and there are service products. So why do you, you buy a TV set when, when you just want to watch TV? Yeah. Yeah. In, I analyzed the TV set and I find 4,360 different chemicals in the TV set. Do you want to watch TV or do you want to own 4,360 different chemicals? So sustainability is over. That was history. It was necessary to learn about it, but it's traditional guilt management from the past. And just to compensate the guilt from the past doesn't help us. Let's talk about innovation, quality, and beauty. A product which becomes waste is just not a good quality. It's not an ethical thing, because ethics people forget under stress. It's an innovation opportunity. And just to be quite clear about, quite frank, innovation cannot be sustainable because it then it would not be innovation. My mother, for example, was the oldest of 11 children, and she was washing the laundry of the family in the river. Yeah. When her parents finally could buy a washing machine, it was not sustainable. She lost her job immediately. Yeah. So it, the ones who made mobile phones yeah, were not sustainable for the ones who did stationary phones. So this is why let's talk about a different type of thinking. Talk about being good instead of less bad. It's a triple top line, not a triple bottom line. We want to be good for the economy, we want to be good for society, but just to be zero for environment, we are too many people. So we need to be good. This is why we need to change our lifespan. We need to give up retirement, because otherwise we don't have time for the other things. Yeah. And yeah, when you see that the 65-year-old person equals a 40-year-old person one year, 100 years ago, yeah, then you cannot do retirement like we did it in the past. In Germany, people now have 22 million people being retired yeah, and only 27 million full-time working people. That doesn't make sense. Society was never that young, so we cannot do this. We need to spend far more time for social things and cultural things, far more time for agriculture. A garden-based agriculture is far more productive than anything else. And sure, we need to take care of the environment positively. So this is the end of retirement. We cannot continue with that because otherwise we are too many. We need to learn to make buildings like trees, buildings which clean the air, buildings which clean water, buildings which are beneficial for the others. We need to learn to get materials back. We need to learn about service products. When, can you imagine people buy a robot when they only want to have 100 million welding points? Yeah, That doesn't make sense. 
Would you imagine people buy solar collectors when they only want to harvest photons? Then we do high-tech waste management for Chinese hazardous waste. That doesn't make sense. So let's do celebrate children on this planet. And you see, when you, when you celebrate life, we come to a far more humble lifestyle. When you say, it's better you're not here, people grab things. They become greedy and angry. When people feel accepted, when they feel safe, yeah, they're always generous and friendly. So we're coming to a far more humble lifestyle, not because somebody else tells us, because no, we want it, because we want that the others enjoy life as well. The, the vandalism in the school, for example, went down to zero. Yeah, there's no vandalism anymore when children will be respected. So let's celebrate a human footprint instead of minimizing damage. This means I look at the child and say, welcome to this planet, instead of minimizing damage. A baby takes about 5,000 diapers. Yeah? And the nice thing in a city like Hamburg, Germany, yeah, the volume of the adult diapers is already bigger than of baby diapers. Yeah? So we basically live in the pre-diaper phase. Yeah? So, but when we would take, for example, the diapers from a baby, and instead of making a material which you need to burn into an, in, an incinerator, because materials are never made for biological cycles, if you make super absorbers, for example, made out of cellulose, yeah, you could easily yeah, grow at least 150 trees in Israel or Egypt. So the baby can be carbon positive from the beginning. So why do we want to be less bad when we can be good? Why? So it means we are active as long as we are healthy. But when we are ill, yeah, when we are handicapped, we need far more attention by society. This changes the whole life. This is the end of retirement. We will not retire anymore because otherwise we are too many. So this is, it's about innovation, quality and beauty. Thank you very much.